just build on this question a little bit. I'll come back to you, V, right now. And that is, do, do, it's kind of a discussion we've been having within my little social group about uh, gender bias versus racial bias. Which do you think is more p dominant in, in our state or even across um, this country, for example? What's your opinion? It's uh, a good one. Um, well, nationally speaking, I would say a racial bias is is the bigger of the two. Here in Vermont, in my personal experience, um, I have been fortunate enough that it has never been a problem for me. So I can't fully say which is worse to me. I can't actually think of an instance where I can say, you know, they were being racial against me. So maybe it's just me. Mm. So, but I, uh, overall, nationally speaking, I, I definitely think it's a racial bias more than a gender bias. Now, there is a gender bias there as well, but I think the, the bigger issue is the racial bias. Mm. What do you think, Betsy? Well, I think that um, politically, I think the gender bias is in the news mm -hmm. because of the transgender issues and the bathroom issues and where they should go and who should be able to go in what bathrooms. But I do think underlining our, our nation is a racial bias, and I think it shows in how we are trying to do these laws about voting and how we are trying, to, in many ways, restricting people of color to being able to have time and the ability to vote. Instead of making it easier, we make it harder. And voting is a right of the people, and we should make that right easier, almost to the point where I think we should have a, a day for the national elections that is a holiday so people can get to the polls, and it's not that they're not getting there after work. I used to work um, 7 to 7, um, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and you're out of luck if you're working that day. You don't get to vote. You do have the chance now to vote early. But I, I think that we still have a, a unique way that people look at people of color that transcends gender by a lot. I think that we have to be more alert to it, and I think we have to recognize it. And sometimes it's not, sometimes you don't see it because maybe it's even in a business where people of color are not being um, elevated at all. And um, can we legislate it? Uh, they have the percentages they have to have in some places, how many people of color are they bringing into schools, or how many people are they having as executives, women as well. So there I would say there is a bias against it a little bit. <laughs> Linda? But that's not leg that's not legislating it. That's <clears throat> right. individual businesses exactly. and, and that kind of thing exactly. that, that that may decide to do <coughs> that. Um, I think racial bias definitely overshadows gender bias, at least in the state of Vermont. Okay. okay? Yeah. I have two daughters. Um, th they went through the school system here. Um, I never felt in any way whatsoever in terms of they were athletic and so on sports teams. Obviously, they weren't on the boys' sports teams, but then, in, but you know, they still participated in that kind of thing. Um, uh, and then they moved on into business, into the business world, and uh, neither one of them had a problem. My older daughter graduated from Purdue University, came back to Vermont to work for IBM and uh, has moved up the line and then moved to Global Foundries when IBM left. And uh, my younger daughter uh, works in Boston and the same situation. She's in a company where she designs uh, websites for major healthcare companies. And so again, no bias. I think the gender bias and then bringing it back to Vermont absolutely is not a problem as compared to the racial bias. Okay.